Hey guys, it's Kevin of the Murphy guys. We're reviewing this a movie that I was very on the fence about, and that of course is Blockers. And what Blocker is essentially about is we center on two different groups. We got these three parents, but we also have the uh, three daughters of these parents. And these three parents, you know, they've basically been friends for a while. Uh, they're three daughters, you know, they've been going to school together. They've been friends for pretty much since the first day of school. And we cut to uh, 18 years later. Basically, they are now all uh, seniors in college and they are gearing up for uh, their senior prom where they plan to lose their virginities to their respective dates. And when the parents uh, give basically are uh, find out about this, you know, through one of the daughter's uh, laptops being open, they immediately hatch a plan to stop this as soon as possible and basically, you know, in turn kind of ruin their entire night. So Blockers in general, I really was not looking forward to this movie. I'm not going to sugarcoat it at all. This movie looked like absolute garbage to me. It looked like the lowest of the low. So much LCD humor. And, uh, you know, when it comes to our comedies, I'm just not very positive nowadays. Especially last year, we have not really gotten a lot of, the, of good ones. Uh, the House especially. This reminded me very much of that. And I really was uh, prepared for something really bad. But I have to say, not only is Blockers easily the most surprised movie of the year, this is a really, really damn good movie. I was surprised by how good this actually is, but Blockers is actually one of the smartest and most well-written comedies, I think, of the entire decade. It's got some really great performances in there. It's got way more characterization than I could have expected. And we're just getting into right now, starting off with the cast. And right off the bat, that is definitely one of the best things about this movie. The entire cast, I think, really does give it their all. There really isn't anyone that I thought was bad in here. Let's first talk about our three main leads. Leslie Mann, John Cena, and Ike Barinholtz. They all really do a great job here. Uh, I really did like all three of their characters in this movie. Uh, Leslie Mann, to start off with, I thought was uh, really great. I liked uh, her whole arc in the movie. John Cena is much more downplayed than you'd expect. Surprisingly, though, the main star of this movie, and the, the scene stealer for me, is easily Ike Barinholtz. And I can't believe I'm actually saying this, because before this movie, Ike Barinholtz is someone who I always saw potential in. He just never seemed to do much of anything for me. Either I hated him, or I just really didn't see much of him. And then you watch him in here, and it's like, where has this Ike Barinholtz been? This guy is much better than everything, every other movie he's done pretty much uh the character he's playing here uh easily i think you know maybe he's not the best character but he definitely has the most gratifying arc out of everyone uh he's sort of the deadbeat father who is kind of uh the moral compass of the group like he's the one who's like what are you really doing you're ruining their night but he also is hilarious he has so many great one-liners there are so many things he said that had me dying but he also has this really great emotional arc and the trajectory of where he does end up going towards the end, it is very well done. And I think he definitely has a very bright future here. I honestly can't believe I'm saying that he was as good as he is, let alone the standout of this movie. And honestly, I really do want to see him do more stuff in the future because I think he definitely was really great here. And then same goes for the three girls. I thought all three of them were really great. Catherine Newton, as usual, was really good. I have yet to see her in anything I did not like her in. Even things like Paranormal Activity 4, I still thought she was good in. She has always been a great actress in my mind, and uh, I think she is once again very good here. Uh, I also really loved uh, Geraldine uh, Vizawantha, I think is how you pronounce her name. Uh, again, this is not a name that you may be familiar with, but after this movie, I think you definitely will. She was really great here. I really liked her in this movie. But again, similar to Ike Barinholtz, the standout here has got to be Gideon Adlin. I loved this character of Sam. Sam is someone who is kind of struggling with her sexuality throughout the whole movie, and she's kind of contemplating, you know, whether or not she is gay or whatever, and her whole arc in the film was so much more than I expected to be, and I gotta say, Adlin did an incredible job here. Again, not someone I was familiar with prior to this movie, but I definitely do want to see more from her. She honestly kind of blew me away a little bit, and I think she did an incredible job in this film. 
And then the rest of the cast I thought also was really good. Graham Phillips I thought was pretty good as uh, Julie's boyfriend. Uh, Miles Robbins I thought was honestly really great as uh, Kayla's prom date Connor. He's this guy who he's into a lot of drugs and things like that. And I actually really did like the connection between these two. I think they had some of the best chemistry throughout the whole movie. Jimmy Bellinger. Uh, even some of the side characters in this movie like uh, Gary Cole and Gina Gershon. These are uh, the parents of Julie boyfriend and they have all these weird like sex games going on throughout the movie and they're very public people and it's very funny to watch I'd say they did a really great job and even Colton Dunn as uh Rudy this limo driver they come across I thought was honestly really funny honestly everyone here did a really great job I think everyone really did nail it in this movie there isn't really a performance in here that I thought was bad everyone really impressed me I gotta say but now let's get to the directing and the writing because that is something I definitely do want to talk about when it comes to this movie. First of all, the directing to this film. You watch the trailer for this movie and you think it's going to be something in the vein of, like I said, uh, The House or something like just any raunchy type comedy that has come out in the past several years and it's anything but that. If anything, this is much more of a coming of age film mixed with like a Seth Rogen comedy. A lot of people have said this is like the female version of Superbad and I would very much agree with that. I think this has a lot of vibes to that and I really did enjoy that and what surprised me most about this film is the comedy. It's a lot smarter than I expected. It's not just, sure the jokes are pretty raunchy, it's not like there's not not raunchy humor in there, but it's actually very smart. It's not in your face. It actually is one of those jokes where you gotta think a little, uh, you gotta think about a little bit to actually find the punchline, and I thought that was honestly really well done. I was laughing very frequently throughout this movie, way more than I expected to, and I thought the directing was very spot on in that regard, but what worked even better and really surprised me was the sentimentality of this movie. I mean, I did not expect for there to be nearly as many emotional moments as there were, but they were honestly really well done here. It's not like they're sprinkled throughout the movie. The drama pretty much goes hand in hand with the comedy. There's a lot of stuff these characters are dealing with that I really was not expecting, and I thought that was definitely very well handled. I thought the tone was honestly really spot on. There was rarely a moment where a joke didn't hit for me, and I thought it was very well written in that regard. Uh, but the writing, let's just get to it, because this movie was written by five different writers, and you'd have to think that because of that, this movie would be very convoluted, right? Well, not really. I mean, I don't know if all these five writers work together or whatnot, but it really did not seem that way. It seemed like this movie did have a focus, and sure, there's we're kind of watching two different movies in one, but it never feels messy. It never feels convoluted. It actually feels like it is very focused, and that's something I actually really did enjoy. And the main plot of this movie... Sure, on paper, it sounds stupid. It sounds so over the top, it sounds so dumb, it sounds like a, such a predictable comedy, but it's less about these parents trying to stop their kids from having sex and more of them kind of realizing that their kids are going off to, you know, college and things like that, and they don't have much time left with them, and they want to try to savor that as much as they possibly can. Take Leslie Mann's character, for example. You know, you see her in the movie, and you think, okay, she's just a very protective mom, but then you start getting into her character a bit more. There's a bit more to her than you'd expect. She's someone who didn't really make the best choices in high school, and she doesn't really want her daughter to go through the same thing. It's, it's really well written again I, I i can't believe how well written this movie really was but i thought they really did a good job in fleshing out these characters and i wish we saw more of this in comedies like when i talk about how one note characters are this is what i want to see i want to see this kind of development especially like i said for ike barinholtz where he goes in this movie is incredible he goes through an incredibly satisfying arc in this film he starts off and you think you know where this character is going to go. You think he's just going to be the father that doesn't really care, that is stopping these two from, you know, in, you know, uh, you know, ruining their night, the night for the kid, for their kids and whatnot. But where he goes, especially at the end of this movie, 
honestly was really touching, and I'm not going to lie, it was kind of on the verge of tears a little bit. It was very well handled, and way more so than I expected. I did not expect to be nearly as emotionally effective as it was. It was also very satisfying, and like I said, just the culmination of everything, it was, I think, just the perfect way to wrap up his arc, and I think also this movie, it's going to do a lot for people who are kind of like Sam and are kind of struggling with being gay, because that's handled very well. They could have easily done something where it's very over the top and in your face, but it actually feels very natural, and I feel like it does have a place in this movie. What I really love about this film is they actually do give a good reason for, one, why all these kids want to have sex, and two, why the parents would want to shut this down. Each kid is kind of going about it in a different way. Julie's doing it because her and her boyfriend have been together for a while. They finally want to, you know, take their relationship forward. Uh, but then you have Kayla, who basically is doing it because she is kind of not jealous of Julie, but she kind of feels left out, and she really wants that, uh, you know, she, she wants that in her life. She wants that affection. She wants that connection with someone, and I thought that was actually very well done. And then, like I said, for Sam, it's much more about her just coming to terms with her sexuality, and I thought that was honestly very well realized. Again, much more than I expected it to be. So the characters are really great, and like I said, the humor is actually very smart and clever. There's a lot of stuff I wasn't expecting. The movie's also very self-aware. It recognizes the fact that what these parents are doing is pretty dumb, and it's not going to turn out well for them. And that's something else that I was very surprised about. It seemed like a movie that was so focused on, let's just see how raunchy we can get, and again, there are some very raunchy scenes in this movie, but surprisingly, some stuff that could have come across as really cringy don't, and again, it's because of the actor's charisma, and because of where they actually go with the joke, this isn't, let's see how far we can go, it's, you know, just the situation, it's a very situational comedy, and it's handled very well, it's very smartly written, much more than I expected, and I was honestly very impressed by that. That being said, it's not the most realistic film when it comes to high school, uh, especially when it comes to the whole them and their dates. There's a whole joke in this movie about how uh, Kayla doesn't know um, the last name of her dates and all that stuff, and the movie doesn't feel very realistic in that regard, at least from what I've seen. When you're asked to prom or you have a date, most times it's someone that you know. It's not just some random person that you're getting to know, but again, that's a small nitpick. It's not really something that that's, that's that big of a deal, but if you're looking for a movie that's like really realistic about high school, I'm sorry to say this movie's not going to do that for you. However, I don't think anyone was expecting that, and it's not really that big of a deal. However, I do actually have one kind of big problem with this movie, and that's because Almost every character is so well fleshed out, except for Julie's boyfriend. And Graham Phillips, without getting into it, I don't think he was bad in the movie, but he was honestly really bland. So there's really not much to Austin as a character. All we really know about him is that he's going off to college. He's got two parents who are very supportive. He's, you know, Julie's following him off to college, and they're going to go, you know, uh, off to college together, basically. And that's really it. There's not really much else given to his character. And this wouldn't be a problem if there wasn't as much provided for the other characters, and specifically for the other two guys who are much more inherently interesting and much more developed. And Austin, in comparison, just isn't. I found him to be quite bland, to be honest with you, and I really did want more from him as a character, but we just didn't really get that. And a lot of time, again, it's not like I didn't feel the chemistry there, because Newton, she brings a lot to the role. She really does. And I do think her and Phillips do have decent chemistry, it's just compared to everyone else, I really do not care about Austin that much as a character, and I wish they would have given him a little bit more to do. Uh, the cinematography here, though, is really great. I think, honestly, it was very well done at times. It's standard, nothing amazing, but it is good cinematography. The score, really good music in this movie. Really did enjoy the soundtrack here. Again, very Rogan, uh, Goldberg-esque in that sense. And uh, the editing. This movie, it is a little bit long, I will say that. The first act of this movie does take a little while to get going, but but once it gets great, it gets really great. Like I said, guys, Blockers is an incredibly surprising film. I was very uh, impressed with how this film really did turn out. It's a very good exploration of... Um parents and kids and the relationship that they really do have, it gives just as much to the parents as it does for the kids, and that's something I was definitely very surprised about. You know, it's not really 
either of their movies. It's both, and I really did enjoy that overall. It's got some of the funniest moments of the year. It really does revitalize, I think, some of these actors' careers a little bit, and I think moving forward... I'm a little bit more satisfied when it comes to comedies, and I really do hope we see more like this film, definitely. And overall, guys, like I said, this is easily the most surprising film of the year so far, and I'm definitely going to give Blockers overall an A-. minus. Seriously, guys, I don't know what's going on with this year, but it seems like almost every movie, specifically comedies that look really shitty, end up somehow being even better than we could have expected them to be. So... I don't know if this is like, you know, kind of a good sign or whatever, if this is simply just a fluke, but is it really that weird to say that I'm not that worried when it comes to some comedies moving forward? Because again, this is just, it's such a strange year that I really would not be surprised if this is actually a pretty decent year for comedies, because so far it seems like that's the case, but we'll have to see when I feel pretty and stuff like that comes out next week, but so far we're on a good track, honestly, but that's it for this video. Hope you guys will see you guys in my next video, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.